Hi, it's David Worrell, your DIY CFO, and today's quick topic are six tips to maximize your employee retention tax credit. Let's get started. First thing you got to do is remember the basics. The PPP and the ERC are very different programs. If you have both, you've got to understand how to balance the payroll between the two. PPP is always going to be your better deal. If you have to make a decision between putting payroll into one or the other, always default to PPP because that's 100%. It's dollar for dollar, payroll dollar to forgiveness dollar. So you earn a dollar for each dollar of payroll. But the PPP is during the covered period only. That's, that's 24 weeks from the day you got the loan, right? About six months. You can get up to $46,000 per employee in the forgiveness calculation. That's a $100,000 employee for 24 weeks. So each employee can be worth $46,000. But if you're the owner, it's a maximum of $20,833. So a little different math there. And don't forget the key here is that a PPP loan forgiveness allows you to use non-payroll expenses also, rent, utilities, software, and safety. Safety being that whatever you spend on your employees to keep them safe from COVID, that's allowed to be deducted on your PPP. Okay, the ERC, very different animal, different game that you're playing here. It's not dollar for dollar forgiveness. It's actually 70 cents, uh, 70 cents on each dollar for the first $10,000 of payroll per person per quarter. And I'm just going to talk about 2021, okay? I know ERC gets really complicated if you look back to 2020, and I can help you do that. For today, we're going to talk about 2021. In 2021, the ERC is 70% of the first $10,000 of payroll per person per quarter if you qualify for that quarter. Uh, that means $7,000 per employee per quarter or $28,000 for the year if you qualify for the whole year. And by the way, there's no difference between an employee and an owner. You can use the owner's payroll expense and you can use the owner's spouse's payroll expense, but you cannot use generational relatives of an owner who has more than 50% ownership. If I own 51% of my company, my grandparents, parents, uh, son, daughter, and grandson and granddaughter do not count uh, if I, I, I cannot employ them and use the ERC credit for them. Okay, and by the way, unlike the PPP, you cannot use non-payroll expenses to qualify. So the, that sets out two very different rules in motion. And that brings us to our first tip. Number one, always use a spreadsheet. This is too complicated, folks. Get a spreadsheet. Here's a great one that I made. It shows the pay date and the name of the person that's being paid. Remember, because ERC is per person, per quarter, you wanna group their pay into quarters and look at it by person so you can see when they get the benefit. In this example, Tammy's a highly paid person, David's a lower paid person, and Tammy gets the, uh, we have a, a PPP that began on February 1st in this example. It's, it's monthly wages and separated by quarter, and the PPP started on February 1st, just to keep it simple. So we uh, allowed Tammy to uh, give all of her wages to the employee retention credit in January because we didn't have the PPP2. But in February, we got the PPP2 and uh, donated Tammy's wages towards the PPP forgiveness for February and March. Same with David, February and March, we put all of his wages towards the PPP. So obviously this is not a maximization strategy here. It's not a it's not the final finished product of what I would do, but it's a good example of the the spreadsheet that I used because I allocated PPP wages, I saw what was left, I decided how much of that would fall within the wage uh, cap for ERC to be eligible, and then I calculated the ERC credit on the far right hand corner, uh, far right hand side. Tip number two, timing matters a lot. In this example, David works for two quarters, April through September. In the first quarter, actually Q2, April, May, June, uh, we put all of his wages towards the PPP, and he maxed out. He was the owner. David's the owner in this case. He maxed out at $20,833, which allowed us to put $3,000 of wages towards the ERC in the, in the April quarter, and uh, since we were then done with the PPP, we put all of his July quarter wages, July, August, September wages towards the ERC. But look what happens when we did that. <clears throat> we missed an opportunity to maximize his ERC in the April, May, June time period. 
and we overfunded his ERC in the July, August, September time period. So we wasted some benefit there because we didn't have uh, the, the, the pay wasn't spread out into the right quarters. Look what happens if we take those last $14,000 that we wasted at the bottom and we put it up to the top, we earn an ERC credit of 5,600 and 1,400 to take our total ERC credit up to $14,000 while leaving our PPP exactly the same. All right, we'll have to bring his PPP wages down into July, August, September and move his ERC wages up into January, February, or sorry, April, May, June. So if you do that, you can play with these numbers any way you like. You can even split them. Obviously, an $8,000 payroll doesn't have to all go into one bucket or the other. You can split it up as we did in June, 4,833 to one program, 3,167 to another program. Anyway, uh, you can see just by doing this simple math, we saved or actually we received an additional benefit of more than five, about $5,000. Okay. Now let's go to tip number three, hire more people. I love this. Hire more people. Uh, number one, you're going to avoid PPP penalties because PPP wants us to hire as many people as possible, right? We have to get back to the staffing levels we were at in 2019. Number two, the ERC will pay, during the quarters you're qualified, the ERC will pay 70% uh, of a person's wages up to their $40,000 annual limit. So a uh, $40,000 annualized salary, I should say. They'll pay $7,000 on the first $10,000 per quarter. It's four quarters in a year, so $10,000 per quarter means I'm hiring about a $40,000 a year person and I'm getting 70% of their wages paid by the government. There's no limit on the number of people you can hire and do this. So if you have a staffing company or a taxi driving company or something where you can hire lots of, of lower paid people, this would be an ideal time to staff up. You'd get 70% of their wages paid. Don't forget that the uh, refund here, the tax credit, is itself taxable. So even though you get 70% back, you're going to pay 20 or 30% of that 70 back in taxes and income tax when, because it's going to increase your profits. So uh, it turns out to be about a 50% net, net uh, gain for you. All right. So that's number three. Hire more people. Number four, give raises or bonuses to your existing people. Max it out, man. You know, during the covered period, if you have both the ERC and the PPP covered period going on at the same time, those two programs together cover the first $140,000 a year annualized salary equivalent for each person. That's $70,000 during the 24-week PPP period or what is that? $11,500 per month. So look, don't spend any money that you don't want to, don't need to, or uh, need for something else. But if you have the PPP money around, instead of giving it back to the government, max it out by giving your people some bonuses or raises. All right, that's my tip four. Tip five, shift payroll. Hey, this goes back to the spreadsheet, the timing issue. When you're looking at this timing and you're trying to decide how to max out each program, look at the beginning and end of each period. So for example, this is Q2. You might want to delay a payroll into Q3 if you know you're going to qualify for ERC next quarter, or you've already maxed out your ERC benefit this quarter. You want to throw it into Q3. Maybe that payroll that usually goes to people on June 30th Maybe it gets paid July 1st instead, right? So the, both programs rely on the paycheck date, the pay issue date on the check on the paycheck to know whether that paycheck qualifies for either program. PPP, ERC, same thing. The date of the paycheck is what matters. PPP captures all paychecks during the 24-week covered period, ERC by quarter. So play with the timing of your actual payroll in order to maximize your benefit. Finally, this is a weird one. Tip number six, hire spouses. <laughs> you know, you, maybe you just need more people on the payroll. Maybe you just need more payroll. Hire your spouse. Hire the employee's spouse. Even if they don't come to work and contribute, you can, con you can consider them an employee. You hire them to do some consulting. You hire them to clean the office. Whatever it is, uh, keep that money uh, going to the employees that you love, trust, and value. 
And uh, who knows? They're gonna they're gonna love you for that. Finally, tip number seven. I don't know. There's a lot of new creative ways to to do this, and the one that I uh, I should have had here is buy software, buy software, uh, utilities, rent, or or safety equipment. So rent a bigger office, buy some new software for the team, sign up for that cool new uh, resource center online from <laughs> from DIY CFO. And spend your money on the software side. Those are qualifying expenses for PPP, which is going to reduce the amount of payroll you need for PPP, which is going to push more payroll onto the tax credit side, and you'll be able to increase your total uh, benefit from those two programs. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching DIY CFO. Leave me some notes, uh, press the subscribe button, whatever it is, and we'll see you around.